Hey guys, it's Vic with High Desert Man, and it has been quite a while since I did a care to pair. Today we're doing a very special one. It's going to include a Pravada cigar review that was special request by Brian over at Pravada himself, and Creo Brew. What is Creo Brew? How's it going? I am today is a very very good day because I'm I'm getting to do another care to pair. I'm so I've wanted to do one for several weeks now, but most of the ones I've thought of have been um, ones that are going to require more planning and stuff. <clears throat> I just haven't had time to do it. Um, so I'm doing a care to pair today, but it's also a very special Pravada cigar review. Uh, but before we jump into that, let's get to uh, some business. I have a lot of new subscribers, uh, well, over the past several weeks. Today at uh, right around 12 o'clock, I think it was about 12.10, uh, I hit 500 subscribers. And uh, so we're getting right on top of time to do the giveaway. I also received the final package from Fox Cigar. That is the, uh, the last company that I was hinting about. And Fox Cigar nailed it. They knocked it out of the park with what they gave me for uh, for my viewers. So, um, anyways, the new viewers I have uh, I've gained over the last few days up to about a couple hours ago are Castle Bags World with a K, Green Frogger, Jay Corridan or Corridan, Casey Obanon. Eric, Eric, I hope I don't butcher your name, man. Eric Skomorowski, Skomorowski, I think that's how it is. GQ Brown 07, Joey Two Pedals, with the number two. Uh, Talaj 187, and the Bearded 1X. Very cool. So, guys, welcome aboard. Welcome to High Desert Man YouTube channel, and thank you so much for your support, for subscribing, and uh, I, I just I can't thank you enough. Okay, so let's talk about the cigar first. This was uh, this was the Lancero that came in the uh, in the May no in the June in my last package uh, from Provada. And I'm going to show you a different cigar than what you're going to see in the pictures. Uh, I have two of them, and I'll explain that in a minute. But this is the, hold on, this is the Padilla Miami 8 and 11 Limited Edition El Titan de Bronze Lancero. Say that a few times fast. This cigar uh, and the, and the uh, 8, 8 and 11 uh, blend, Miami blend, I should say, from um, Ernesto Padilla has a pretty turbid history so let's try to cover that. Uh, so I, uh, this one came out of the June 2019 Pravada package and uh, you can see the Pravada shirt that I'm wearing this is one of Brian's new shirts uh, that he came out with this is an amazing shirt it's it's made out of I don't remember what the percentage is but it's made out of bamboo uh, and, and I think it was like 60-40 or 70-30 or, uh, bamboo and cotton, if I remember correctly. Don't hold me to that. But it's kind of a stretchy material or a dry fit or something, uh, but completely uh, natural, I believe. And it just feels really amazing. And Brian, so Brian watched my video of me doing my last uh, unboxing and saying goodbye to the Pravada Club for a little while. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in this video to that. And he got a hold of me, said, "Hey, brother, I don't want to lose you, man. What, what, uh, what's wrong? What do we have to do to keep you?" 
And I said, well, you know, I, I just, I have, I can only commit to one club right now. And uh, I gave my reasons, which are in my video. And so he said, well, could you do me a huge favor and at least do a review of the Medea, I'm sorry, the Padilla Miami uh, 8 and 11. And I said, absolutely. He said, I'll send you a shirt. What size are you? I told him. He sent me a shirt. And with the shirt, he sent me a second Padilla Miami 8 and 11, Lancero. The difference between the two, they're exactly the same cigar from the same vintage, everything. But this, they ran out of the secondary band, what they're calling secondary. I would have thought it was the primary. Um, but the more ornate, larger band uh, that goes on this cigar, they ran out of those. So I got one with the band, one without. I'm going to smoke the one without. The other one is going in my aging humidor, and it's going to get even more age on it. Uh, okay, so the original Miami came out uh, in 2005. It was blended originally by Jose uh, Pepin Garcia out of the El Rey de los, uh, de los Habanos factory, which is near Miami. It's not actually in Miami. Uh, but the cigar receives its name from the El Titan de Bronze factory, which is uh, in Little Havana, pretty much on the corner of 8th, and 11th, 8th Street and 11th Street. And I've actually been there before. Um, production moved several times between Nicaragua, Honduras, and Miami. Uh, later in, so the, a 2011 blend came out. And then a 2013, I believe this is the 2013, um, or it actually might be the 2011. It, that, that was a little bit confusing. It, like I said, it's kind of muddy waters trying to find information on this. Um, but it, it was initially done by Jose uh, Pepin Garcia, but later it was reblended by Ernesto Padilla and Willie Herrera who's now, who, he, he's from El Titan de Bronze, his family owns that factory, and uh, he's now with Drew Estate. This version, and, and the, the final version as I understand it, uh, coming out of El Titan de Bronze, was only touched by one roller. So they, the, the project was only allowed to be handled by one torcedor, um, and it was a level nine torcedor, which as I understand it, all the, the torcedors at El Titan de Bronze are level nine, so what's level nine mean, or category nine as it, as it was in Cuba? It's a Cuban uh, designation that, that uh, rates the roller. So there was, no, there was no category one through four. It started actually with five. Five was just local, um, uh, what they call it, uh, local internal market only. So stayed within Cuba, stuff that's not rolled as nice. A level six, does small Vitolas only. Level seven does medium Vitolas, level eight does large Vitolas, and then level nine is a master across all Vitolas. So it, it just means a person who can, who can expertly roll any size uh, that they come in contact with. Okay, the, so the specifications. The MSRP on this stick was $10.50. The wrapper is Nicaraguan Corojo. Um, Okay, here's where it gets a little muddy again, because the 2011 apparently had Ecuadorian Habano. Now, somewhere there was a typo if the blend never changed, but, but this one's supposed to be Nicaraguan Corojo, Nicarag uh, for the wrapper, the binder is Nicaraguan Criollo, and the filler is Nicaraguan Jalapa Candego Criollo and Corojo seed. So, quite a, quite a blend there. This is evidence of what can happen when you cruise Instagram while sitting on the toilet. You get ads, and some of those ads are geared specifically to what you're into, and I got suckered in by one of those ads. Um, so this is actually not coffee. This is, Creole Brew is uh, roasted ground cacao. And I've already been drinking some of this. My wife's been drinking it. Uh, and it's just a really interesting thing. So it's, it's meant to be sort of a coffee replacement. They basically say, they say it brews like coffee, but you get the benefits of cacao. And it's just 100% pure ground uh, cocoa beans. So, instead of caffeine, it has theo theobramine, 
a naturally occurring stimulant that can last longer than uh, caffeine, but it's a little bit milder and doesn't uh, have the same sort of jarring effects that caffeine can. And it's more pleasant to more people. Um, and they, they have several roasts, including some flavored roasts, like a, a peppermint and stuff. Now, you don't get this thinking, oh, I'm getting like hot chocolate or something, because it's nothing like that. Uh, this is the Ghana French roast. It is darker, so we, we got a light roast and a dark roast, and, uh, and I've tried both, and I personally like the dark roast more. It's non-GMO, all that crap. They say it's honest energy, uh, as if caffeine wasn't. Caffeine's all natural. Um, zero sugar. So th this stuff is really interesting because it's... Um, so when you sm open the bag, you have to take the, the aroma with a grain of salt because uh, it is pure dark chocolate. It is pure... De decadent dark chocolate. It very definitely tastes like cocoa, but I would say in your mind think more of like a baker's chocolate or a baker's cocoa that's unsweetened. Uh, and I've actually used that uh, that analogy before for a cigar that I've had. I don't remember offhand which one it was. but. Um, uh, so um, obviously, if you add sugar and stuff to it, it's it's sweet. It gets more of a chocolatey taste then, but it's still not like biting into a dark chocolate bar or something. It's a really hard flavor to describe because it's 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 clearly cocoa, but it's not. <laughs> um, all right. So and the way that we're going to do it is a, a French press. You can brew it uh, sort of a percolating brew, uh, French press, which is an infusion brew. Or um, you can do a cold brew, although the way that you do a cold brew is you hot brew it first at double strength, and then you pour it over ice and, uh, and, and cold brew it that way. So it's not really a cold brew. All right, guys. So when you brew this stuff, pretty much brews like coffee. My wife just used this. And what you want to do is use, they say use one tablespoon per, um, per eight ounces of water. Now, I did that before. I, mi I mixed up 16 ounces of water, uh, two tablespoons of this stuff, and to me, it was a little bit on the light side. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm still going to do, uh, well, I'll do a little bit more than two tablespoons. Uh, I will put a picture of what these grounds look like. They, they look like uh, light roast coffee grounds really, even the dark roast does. Um, they, it pretty much looks like a coarse ground coffee like you'd put in a, a standard drip uh, coffee pot. Um, the texture is kind of weird. It, they've got kind of a waxy t texture which of course the first thing I wanted to know is can I grind these in my grinder and can I do a, a cacao espresso shot? Um, I haven't tried that yet, and I, I haven't done too much research yet to see if I can, but I have a feeling that that's not going to work out so great because of how waxy the beans are. Okay, there's a, just a little over two tablespoons, and then I already pre-measured uh, just slightly over uh, 16 ounces of water in here, so I won't quite pour all of it. And, uh, well, it, it got mixed up pretty good there. So generally you want to stir it. And then you want to let it sit for six minutes. Stir it up. Let it sit for two more minutes. Six to seven minutes. Stir it again. Let it sit another couple minutes. And then pour your, pour your coffee. Or plunge it and pour your coffee. So that it's uh, a slightly larger ring gauge. Well, I read on thing that it, it was a 42, but it's it's not a 42. It's a 38. So it is a it is a true Lancero. I don't know who uh, I don't know who put it, it was a 42. Uh, anyways, as I was saying, there's only two ways, in my opinion, proper ways to light a Lancero. 
One is with a cigar match. Burn all the sulfur off first, then light the cigar. Uh, and the other method is with a cedar spill. The cigar is absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a really, really nice looking cigar. Super excited to get into this. The draw feels perfect. The reason why I say that's the way to light a Lancero is because just about any lighter is too much for this. Wow. It's really good. It is really good. I don't even know what I'm getting yet. It's uh I'm getting a good dose of pepper in the nose. It's got a moderately long finish. There's some cedar in there, some cinnamon. Wow, things feel very uh, balanced so far. Balanced and, and really, really good. want to stir just to agitate those grounds and really make sure that uh, all the oils and, and the flavors is coming out of them. There's almost uh, it's not sweet. There's, I'm not getting any sweetness off of it. Now, from an appearance perspective, it's not black like coffee. It's just got an off color, that like a like a well like a chocolate brown really. It's it looks like a chocolate brown. All the oils there's oils uh, on the surface now, and uh, now the aroma of the coffee is very similar to what the uh, ground bean smells like but there's more of a roasty component to it now and it's it's really a, a weird sensation it tastes very much like like cacao uh, it's not sweet obviously it's um, it's just a really interesting flavor Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's very good. If, if you're not a coffee drinker, this is probably something, because um, there's no bitterness. It's super smooth. Um, and it's, to me, it, it's kind of weak still. I added more cocoa this time. Um, <clears throat> but maybe it's just because mentally I'm thinking coffee. I don't know. Um, it's It's got a very, very good flavor. Very smooth flavor. I, I don't want to say it's rich because it's it, 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 it pretends like it's going to be rich but then pulls back. And what it is doing to this cigar, oh my gosh! It is... It is fantastic. The two flavors blend perfectly. They could not be more perfect. The 
cocoa has pulled some of the pepper out of the cigar. It's, it's softened it. My gosh, I could do this every single morning. I, this is, I think that this is about the most perfect morning cigar pairing that I think I've ever done. It is really, really interesting. All right, I'll uh, cleanse the palate a little bit here. And uh, we will be back with you in just a little while. I'll come back and tell you about the coffee and about the cigar. Stick around. is full of ash now. I, I, I bash the ash right into the, I bash the ash right into the uh, windscreen or the, the, the screen on the front twice. Ah, I am a complete mess. This was a very, very fun experiment and I, I, so I really paid attention to the cigar and to the brewed cacao uh, and I, I kind of kind of did them together and separately. I would take a drink of the cacao, wait a little bit, take a draw on the cigar, and I, I would kind of play around with how the two were uh, intermingling. I would avoid the cacao, and I would, I would just leave it alone for a little while and just smoke on the cigar. Uh, that way I would come back to the, just the true flavors of the cigar. And wow, I, I mean, this is just, this is an excellent cigar. Now, I noticed on the band uh, here a few minutes ago, the band says Padilla Miami 8 and 11, and then in uh, Roman numerals, it says 17, 2017. Um, so I believe this is a 2017 cigar. I don't remember. Yeah, I read through this a few times. He didn't say anything about uh, about it being 2017. The burn has been flawless. It burns like a razor blade. It has not it has not wavered one bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. I mean, I I consider that perfect because that's what it's been doing all the way down the stick. A really, really exceptional cigar. And I, I just, I, I can't say enough about the Lanceros. There is something magical about the Lanceros. They always produce tons of flavor. Uh, with the Creole Brew, uh, dark chocolate with no sweetness and no bitter. It's just a, a, a natural dark chocolate flavor. Now I'm speaking about the uh, brewed cacao. Um, for me, as a coffee drinker, it seems a bit mild, but it was it was very tasty, and man, I mean, the pairing with this cigar was just phenomenal. <clears throat> um, it tones down the pepper a bit. Uh, I noticed that uh, if I if I left the cacao alone for a little while and just favored the cigar, that pepper would start to come back. I'd start to get some pepper in the nose more pepper coating on the tongue and then I take a drink of that and and it, so my experiment was this I'd take a drink of that and I'd wait for maybe a minute or so uh, before I drew on the cigar then I would draw on the cigar and the smoke would have this luscious chocolate sensation to it and, and it would only last maybe the first draw and then it would disappear but boy, it was, it was something else. Something to keep in mind is one of the worst things that you can do is a carbonated beverage, and more specifically like a, a seltzer water or something like that. Reason why is because those will clean your palate too much. And then you'll end up just getting a lot of the smoke flavor and, and the smoke and everything. So typically when you're smoking a cigar, if, if you're pairing with uh, uh, some beverage, you kind of want to mix them because the, the, you want a little bit of a dirty palate that the beverage provides 
so that you can really draw out the flavors of the cigar. But generally, you do not want to do like a, a sparkling water or something like that by itself because it just cleans your palate too much. Okay, so as I got down to uh, the end of the, the second third, essentially, uh, the wood notes, that, that cedar faded pretty quick. I, the cedar lasted maybe the first quarter of the cigar, so cedar faded and became more of a, a kind of a, an oak. And uh, I got a dry wheat toast component out of it that was really nice. Uh, and, and now, instead of just a, a dry wheat toast, it's, it has transitioned into a little bit of a burnt wheat toast. The texture of the smoke is very creamy, just very enveloping, super, super good. Um, that's, that's about it for my tasting notes. Um, a dynamic from the start. Once lit, a cinnamon spice coats the tongue. All right, I was right on the money. I get an incense aroma along with gingerbread and red hot candies. Red hot candies. Next comes toffee, rich tobacco, white pepper, and frankincense. I have to pause to think about how elegant this cigar is, both in shape and complexity, and of course construction. It may be one of the most beautiful cigars I've ever had the pleasure of smoking. The retro heart, the retro hail is cinnamon and oak. Man, Brian, thank you. This is, this is two strong confirmations I've had on my palate. I really was starting to question my palate. So uh, I'm a pro, that's, that's what it comes down to. I'm very humble. You can get these, this particular one on the Pravada.com, I'm sorry, PravadaCigarClub.com website. He has a shop now where he offers um, the cigars that come in the packages, whatever he has uh, remaining stock of, you can buy those cigars. They're usually a little bit pricey. I, I, if, I think this one was 16 bucks on his website, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, but you can get it and try it. But there it is, guys. This has been a new Care to Pair, first one I've done in a long time, featuring the Pravada Cigar Club June offering of the Let's see, Padilla Miami 8 and 11 Limited Edition El Titan de Bronze Lancero and the Creole Brew Ground Cacao in the Ghana French Roast. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, surely you're not going to have enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed this pairing. It has been fantastic. Super, super good smoke. Very good beverage. I've got to find some more uh, cigars that this pairs with well. And uh, yeah, guys, until the next video, stay rugged.